Yesterday was not a total waste, but I did not accomplish what I needed to accomplish. So I have to make a three and a half pound full size axe. I started four different axes yesterday, two of which are the pack axe that I've made a lot of and sold. And then two were supposed to be this full size axe. That's not how it turned out. 1060 steel, one inch thick, three inches wide, five inches long. This should be enough weight to get our finished weight that we're after. So my two attempts at this full-size axe, I was able to turn into a couple different splitting hatchets for use around the campfire or the wood stove in splitting kindling and smaller firewood. We're gonna make, hopefully, make the full-size axe today. I purchased this uh, surface plate, granite surface plate from Penn Tool Company, in case you're interested seemed to be about the best place to get what I was looking for. Now these are precision uh, instruments. Not the most expensive out there by any means, but they'll definitely be definitely be adequate for what I need them for. I would say they're, they're lower middle road level equipment or instruments, but like I said, more than adequate. I'm hoping to streamline some processes that I'm I have been doing in other ways, but also uh, increase my accuracy with with my builds and do that in a reasonable amount of time. So really what we have here is a super flat rock and a height gauge. The height gauge tells you how high off of this uh, true flat surface the, uh, the point of the height gauge is. That's what it's really designed for. but. It's also useful to mark specific uh, distances off of this one singular plane. It'll have a lot of different uses. So getting that out of the box and I'm going to show you guys kind of how one way that I'm going to use it and you may have seen it on other channels too. But uh, in the meantime getting that billet forged down the stock dimensions are not uh, not what we need. So back in the day I uh, actually spent two and a half years working in a machine, small manufacturing and machine shop and we had granite surface plates that were about four times the size of this one and on their own standalone uh, mounts or whatever and the height gauges we used were quite a bit more expensive because obviously we had to have very very good precision uh, measuring instruments. See how much wider, or about an inch and a quarter. So we're jumping back and forth between a few different things today because that's that's what I did uh, over the last couple of days as the billet was heating up and I would, you know, work on stuff back and forth. A lot of smithing is understanding where your material needs to be before you even start forging whatever it is you're forging, and so working this billet down to about inch and quarter or inch and three-eighths wide or thick by these other dimensions uh, was necessary in order to actually forge the axe that we we're looking for because what happened in the first two attempts is I did not have enough material in what was going to be the cheeks of the axe and so when I forged the eye out to dimension it stretched out the sides or the cheeks far too much they were too thin and also too uh too low like they weren't tall enough and that was all due to the fact that i didn't have my uh didn't have my stock forged to where it needed to be and and actually i started with a build that was too small uh, but you know it's kind of hard to figure this stuff out without going and doing it so once we have our material where we need it to be to start with, then we can forge the project. And you don't really know exactly where that is until you've ran through the whole process. You're literally backtracking, I guess you could say. If you could start from the beginning and work backwards, it would uh, start from the end and work backwards, it would uh, be easier. But that's not how it works. 
So we've got the eye punched. It came out quite nicely. And it's a matter of running a series of drifts to open that eye up, stretch it out to the final dimensions. Okay, well, we, we kept our weight. I think we're close, but I think we're gonna be able to make weight on this. And it's looking pretty good. I like the profile on here. Need a, little, a little cleanup to do after heat treat, but that's the next thing, next thing to do. Okay, day three out here. I had to knock off early yesterday to go to the chiropractor. And now we're finally gonna have some finished product, hopefully today. You know, these guys I can put handles on, but having the ax that I set out to build is important. So, I've got to do some straightening on one of the one-off axes that I forged, and then we can heat treat them all.
could not get this to come out straight. So this is the third or fourth time that I've quenched the bit, reheating it and quenching it without normalizing, or I should say without annealing it. It's just completely covered in cracks now. Look at that. Little surface, uh, just texturing really from forging will provide enough of a uh, start for a crack, but you can see there how deep those cracks are. I went back and checked this axe too. Only quenched it once, but uh, it's also cracked. I shouldn't have quenched the bit all the way down to ambient temperature, but I was trying to make sure that it wouldn't get over tempered from the heat from the rest of the axe. But that uh, came out of failure. I uh, I really hope that the uh, big axe is is okay, but I got I got to look at it. It's not. Got a big old crack right here. Wow, that is insanely disappointing. Comes all the way down to here. Well, it looks like we'll be forging this again today. Well, a couple of thoughts. I can't afford to keep making scrap. That's not uh, gonna pay the bills, and this is not fun at all. This <laughs> uh, not a good feeling. Um, you know, this is the only thing I have going right now. I have various other products in various stages of completion, and so it's not as if there's nothing coming out of the shop that's actually sellable <clears throat> at all, but, you know, two days and several pieces of scrap. Another thought is this is one reason why custom orders are always going to be more expensive. But when you don't make something on a regular basis or you haven't made something just like that before, there's always some learning curve or figuring out what you're doing. And, and that just removes any efficiency and uh, the pro, you know, productivity to that project that you could count as profit. And that's why when you have a model or something you make a lot of over and over and over, you've got the process down. But anyway, the, I, I could have avoided this if I would have just oil quenched. But I decided to do a little bit of research and development on top of the custom project. Probably not a good idea. Uh, I should have just oil quenched it like I've always done before. I've, I've been wanting to experiment with uh, hardening the bit, leaving the rest of it softer for extra toughness, and I haven't really developed that yet in my shop. Obviously it didn't work. Now ideally in any shop you've got sort of a portion of your time that you can dedicate to developing new products or skills, and that's, that's important. And uh, in the overall picture, that's kind of how it works. But I was not planning to do this this week. I was, I, I, I have other custom orders that I need to get to, and that's kind of what's on my mind for this month and the next couple of months, because I have several to do. And that's not what I wanted to do this week. I wanted to knock this out and get it done. But, you know, backtracking my steps here, I should have thought this through a little bit better. Stick with the process as close to the process that I've already uh, developed and worked with instead of trying to stack on new uh, new techniques within this project that is, is new already. So that wasn't good. That wasn't smart. So I'm going to have to uh, 
remember that next time. By the way, these, uh, these two did survive fight, but I did them a little bit differently. I didn't quench them down to ambient temperature, and I let the heat run to the edge a little bit, and then monitored that. So I, um, I did these correctly, or maybe I got a little lucky. No issues there. Okay, I ground this to the the lines that I gave myself here, and I put some new ones on there actually. But it's very simple. You just lay it on that block, hold it flat, and then run that uh, height gauge with that carbide point. Just scratch those lines, flip it over and do the same. You have to adjust on this side a little bit because this is thinner than this side. And now we've got a nice, I mean everything is perfectly in line with the blade, which is perfect because this block wasn't square to start with and then setting the tang in the block, you know, that's not perfectly square most of the time. So now we've got a, something to work with here and I can go ahead and trace what I want for the handle. Okay, uh, I don't know, a couple hours later, we have another axe forged. Final normalizing cycle in the forge, and then I will run it through a cycle in the kiln, and we'll harden it out of the kiln in oil. We're going to take away all the variables from here on out, because we just have to get a finished product. We'll let this cool down. I'll take it to the grinder, clean out the profile and stuff. Then we can uh, heat treat it and move on. In the meantime, I've got this this guy closer. So I've been working on the radius in here, on, on the guard, and uh, just paying attention to these lines that they follow around here to the guard and everything like that. So just real slow and steady. And I've got the uh, hole drilled for the pin, but I'm gonna do a little dome on it so I'm finishing out the finishing out the handle before I put the pin in but everything's good to go with that I'm beginning to think that I should invest in a uh, a knife vise so I can work on the handle without having to unclamp it every time and re situate things I think Maybe after this many years, it's uh, something I should probably invest in. Got the uh, nickel silver pin installed and domed and buffed up. Nice little button on each side. Alright, I guess fourth time's a charm on this one. This is attempt number four. We would have had it on number three, but anyway. I think I'm going to go inside and uh, build a sheath for this little knife. I'll show you that here in just a second. Turned out pretty nice. I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. So, all together, third day into the week here. And uh, I have something to show for it. So I'm going to try to make the rest of the week productive. Appreciate you guys watching, and we will see you on the next video.